Hey you all, welcome to Religion Wing TV where my spiritual ears stay. Welcome to the morning read guys, episode 41. We have been doing this 41 days straight you all. And I'm here to say that God bless you all for hanging in there with me. It's not always easy guys and I appreciate the encouragement. We are in the morning read episode 41 we will read uh second samuel 3 4 and 5 today we know that some people like to get up and read people to filth and we like to get up and read people to life so with that being said you all let's go ahead and get into this to this morning read okay backdrop the book of samuel in the hebrew bible was once one book right I'm going to put that out there so you guys can be woke up to your truth. And um, it's all about Samuel. He was a prophet. Uh, his mom dedicated him to the Lord. She couldn't have no kids. He grew up. He prophesied that David would be king, but the people of Israel wanted Saul. David and Saul go back and forth, hand to hand combat. And what we're going to get to in this read is pretty much Saul passed away. Some of his sons rise up. So it's the house of Saul against the house of David. And we're going to see how the king that just passed away and the king elect go head to head. Well, the king's family, you know what I'm saying. So basically, good morning, guys. Good morning. I have not slept yet, you all. I did a seven hour live. I was just talking my butt off about random stuff or whatever. And now I'm here for the morning read. I'm going to try to push it out within a half hour. Give you guys your bread for the day. Your daily bread. Thank you for trusting me. Trusting the most high God. Through me. You know. To, to get your, your knowledge and understanding from here. Alright. So when the music ends. We will go ahead and get into. 2 Samuel chapter 3. This is Religion Wink TV guys. And my spiritual ears stay. Yes. So let's go ahead and get into it, you all. 2 Samuel chapter 3. Now, we understand that people cannot see, uh, physically read. And some people are just church hurt and abused by the church, right? So it's our duty, it's our obligation to get the word of God out there. If you obey Christ, he said, go out into all the land and preach ye the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the most high God. Christ would never tell you to preach the gospel of himself because he came to do the father will. And the gospels that he preached and that he taught was the kingdom of heaven. So we have to be very, very, very clear about that. Okay, guys. So. Three minutes into the read, let's go. Now, there was long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. And, verse 2. And unto David were sons born of Hebron. And his firstborn was Amon, and of Ahinaam, the Jezreelitess. Like prophetess, Jezreelitess. Three. And the second, Chielabot, oh, it sounds like Chalo here, Chielabot, Chielabot, Tel Aab, of Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And the third, Absalom, the son of Micah, the daughter of Tamo, king of Geshur. All right, so now he has three sons. Four. So far, we have not seen Solomon come through yet because Solomon is from Bathsheba. And we're going to get into the story of how King David sent Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, into war on the front lines so he can get killed and have his wife. This is the book of Samuel. The story of King David's adulteries, his womanizing, his murderers. His murders and his disobedience unto the Most High God a little bit. Alright, so, and the fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith, and the fifth, 
Shepatiah, the son of Ab Abiatel. See, he got so many women. And verse 5, and the sixth, Etheram, by Egla, David's wife. There were born to David in Hebron. Six. And it came to pass, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. Seven. And he had a concubine whose name was Rizbah, the daughter of Aiyah, Aiyah and Ishbosheth, said to Abner, Whence for hast thou gone into the into my father's concubine? How are you going to my father's concubine? They said Reuben did that to Jacob, slept with his wife. Eight. Then was Abner very wroth with the words of Ishabeth, and said, Am I a dog's head, which against Judah do shew kindness this day unto the house of Saul thy father? to his brethren and to his friends and have not delivered thee into the hand of David that thou chargest me the day with the fault concerning his woman nine so do God to Abner and more also and more also except as the Lord have sworn to David even so I do him ten to translate the kingdom from the house of Saul and to eat up the throne of David, and to set up the throne of David over Israel, over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba. 11. And he could not answer Abner a word again, because he feared him. 12. And Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Who is this land? Saying, Also, make thy league with me, and behold, my hand shall be with thee to bring about all of Israel into me. See y'all forming them leagues and alliances and things like that on these YouTube streets. Let's see how this uh, league right here, how they, how they team up and for what. Verse 13, and he said, well, I will make a league with thee, but one thing I require of thee, that is, thou shalt not see my face except first bring Milka. Saul's daughter, when thou comes to see my face. 14. And David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife Milcah, which I espoused to me for an hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, even from Paltiel, the son of Laish. No, I was just sitting here like, isn't there a lot of East that was married to Jocasta, the king, Oedipus Rex? I'm just going off a little bit, but that name sounds familiar. Anyway, 16. And her husband went with her along, weeping behind her, to Bahurim. Then said Abner unto him, Go, return. And he returned. And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, Ye sought for David in times past to be king over you. 18. Yeah, because, see, in times past, they wanted David, but they, 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 they chose Saul in 1 Samuel. You have to go back into the playlist, the morning reads, and um, just go back to the first one and catch up with us, guys. So, verse 18. Now then do it, for the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hands of the Philistines and out of the hands of all their enemies. It wasn't just the Philistines, guys. It was a lot of people. So, 19. And Abner also spoke in the ears of Benjamin, and Abner also spoke in the ears of David and Hebron, all that seemed good to Israel, and that seemed good to the whole house of Benjamin. 20. So Abner came to David to Hebron, and 20 men with him. And David made Abner and the men that were with him a feast. 21. And Abner said to David, I will, rise, I will arise and go. 
and will gather all Israel unto my Lord thy king, that they may make a league with thee, and that thou mayest reign over all thine heart, desire it. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. 22. So this kind of league is kind of, you know, leaguing up to be something positive but the next verse could be something wicked you never know what these morning reads right yesterday they ended up fighting the house of israel one side was on the other side they was warring now we have david teaming up with um one one of the people of saul here ishabeth and actually saul's son who rose up and took king so it goes on to say and abner 19 also, nope, we did that one. 20. 21. And Abner said unto David, No, we're on 22. Excuse me, guys. I always move my finger. And behold, the servants of David and Joab came from pursuing a troop and brought in great spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. 23. When Joab, all the hosts that was with him, were come, they told Joab, saying, Abner the son of Ner, come to the king, and he has sent him away, and he is gone in peace. 24. Then Joab came to the king and said, What hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee. Why is it that thou hast sent him away, and he is quite gone? 25. Thou knowest Abner the son of Ner, that he came to deceive thee, and to know thy going out and thy coming in, and to know all that thou doest. 26. And when Joab was come from David, he sent messengers unto Abner, which brought him again from the well of Syrah, but David knew it not. 27. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly. You know how some of y'all get behind closed doors and them DMs and your messages and stuff. See, secret stuff. This He took him quietly, right? And smote him there under the fifth rib that he died for the blood of Asiel, his brother. Guys, this secret talking and all that is what's killing us out here. Do it openly. God says the only thing you should do privately when you pray, when you make your alms, read us uh, 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 Matthew chapter 6. When you make your alms, when you make your givings, when you do tithes and offerings, whatever. He says if you do that secretly, I will reward you openly. I will reward you openly. Right here. Take heed that you do not make your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when you dose thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before the men, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou dost make thy arms, do not let thy right hand know what the left hand doeth. You think that's something you the world made up? Thine arms may be in secret with thy father, which seed in secret himself shall reward thee openly. Okay? So now, back over here. And we're on chapter 28. We're on chapter 3. Of the morning read. Second book of Samuel. Chapter 3 verse 28. And afterward when David heard it. He said I am my kingdom. I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever. From the blood of Abner the son of Ner. 29. And let it rest on the head of Joab. And all his father's house. And let there not fall from the house of Joab. One that hath an issue. Or that is a leopard, or that leaneth on a staff, or that falleth on a sword, or that lacketh bread. Let there be no want here, right people? 
So Joab, verse 30, and Abishai, his brother, slew Abner because he had slain their brother, Asiel, at Gibeon in the battle. 34, and David said to Joab and to all the people that were with him, Rend your clothes and gird with sackcloth and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the bier. 32. And they buried Abner in Hebron, and the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner. And all the people wept. 33. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dieth. 34. The hands were not bound, nor the feet put into fetters, as man falleth before wicked men, so fell it thou, and all the people wept again over him. 35. And when all the people came to the came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day, David swore, saying, So do God to me, and more also I will taste bread or all else till the sun be down. Kind of like a fast here. 36. And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them, as whatsoever the king did please all the people. 37. And we have to go to 39 in this chapter. For all the people in all Israel stood or understood that day that it was not the king to slay Abner, the son of Ner. 38. Because David was quick to slew, slaying whoever he want to. But we're going to get into it in this book right here. The second Samuel. Second book of Samuel. And 38. And the king said unto his servants, Know ye not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel? And the last verse of this uh, chapter. 39. And I am this day weak, though anointed king. These men, the sons of Zeruiah, be too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Here's King David, a man after the heart of God. And, and it's too hard for him sometimes, people. It's too hard for me. It's too hard for you. But in our weakness, his strength is made perfect. Remember that, guys. That's, you can find that in the First Corinthians chapter 12, Second Corinthians chapter 12, somewhere around there. Excuse me. So, this is Religion Wing TV, and we're moving right into chapter 4, verse 1. Because my spiritual ears stay. First 1, chapter 4. And when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, his hands were feeble, and all the Israelites were troubled. 2. And Saul's son had two men that were captains of bands. The names of the one was Baathna, and the name of the other, Re 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 Rechab, the sons of Remnon and Betharite, of the children of Benjamin, for Baroth was also reckoned to Benjamin. 3. And the Beorothites, fled to get get to him and were sojourners there until this day find them there guys go look for him get to him now remember some of the names in this bible might have been changed by man to distort and 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 to you know make you forget but check these people out when it says unto this day unto this day for and jonathan saw a son had a son that was lame of his feet and his five years old son the tidings came of saul and jonathan out of jezreel all right and this is going to get good all right you got to hear this story guys this is a disability here from birth his feet are lame and the nurse took him up and fled and it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame, and his name was Mephibosheth. 5. And the sons of Remna, the Beotherite, Rekba, and Baana, went and came about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who lay on a bed at noon. 6. And they came thither unto the midst of the house, as though they would have fetched wheat. 
and they smote him under the fifth rib and Rakta the Bahana, his brother, escaped. You 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 reckon under the fifth rib is where Christ was pierced in the side? What's up with that fifth rib? Is it the sixth rib that God took out and formed and made a woman out of? Something with them piercing somebody under the rib. Because they know, like I said, if Christ was on the cross and they went up to his side, they could have pierced his heart up there somewhere around the fifth rib. There's a lot of metaphors. There's a lot of parables. There's a lot of foreshadowing in this Bible that we have to begin to understand. Verse 6, And they came tither into the midst of the house as though they would have fed to eat. And they smote him under the fifth rib. And Rachav and ba Baana, his brother, escaped. Verse 7, And we have to go to verse 12 in this short chapter of verse 4. For when they came into the house, he lay on his bed in his bedchamber, and they smote him, and slew him, and beheaded him, and took his head, and gate them through the plain all night. I would have been like, they, 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 they smote him, slew him, beheaded him, and took his bread. <laughs> oh wait, and get him through the plain all night. Verse 8. I just love the way this account of the Bible reads. It's kind of poetic, kind of fun with the words, but it can be a bit confusing. Some of the names are so hard to pronounce, but it's the most original names we have of the Hebrew descent. So, A, and they brought the head of Ishabeth unto David in Hebron and said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishabeth, the son of Saul, thine enemy. Saul sought thy life, and the Lord hath avenged my lord, the king, this day of Saul, and of his seed. 9. And David answered Rechab and Bahana, and his brothers, the, the sons of Remnah, and the Bethorite, and said unto them, As the Lord liveth, who hath redeemed my soul out of all of the adversaries? 10. When one told me, saying, Behold, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good tidings, I took hold of him and slew him in Ziglag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tithings. Is this the man, the Amalekite? Remember he said uh, he was there and burnt down Ziglag, and they took uh, David's wives, and David, had, David asked him, Well, where is everybody? He went back and retrieved everybody. But he's telling him a story here of something that happened. 11. How much more which wicked men have slain a righteous person in his house, his own house, upon his bed? Shall I not therefore now requite his blood of your hand and take you away from the earth? Verse 12. And David commanded his young men, and they slew them, and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them over there, the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth Ishbeth, Ishbeth, and buried it in the sepulchre of Ebna in Hebron. That ends the read of chapter 4, everyone. We are 24 minutes into the read. This is Religion Week TV. And we are headed into chapter 5, verse 1. And we have 25 verses to go. Let's go. This is Religion Wink TV and my spiritual ears. Stay. <laughs> Guys, listen. Welcome to this edition of 41, episode 41 of the Morning Read. We like to get up because we know people get up and read people to filth. So we get up and read people to life. All right. Chapter 5, verse 1. Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and spake, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Like we are, who did they say? They said all the tribes of Israel. Obviously, David is a Hebrew Israelite. Obviously, he's a Hebrew Israelite. We have distinguished and shown how these people are black in this Bible without any other extra books. We don't need no other teachings. So David has to be. You're, you're my bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. We're kindred. 
We're of the same spirit and the same tribes. So too, also in time past, when Saul was king over us, thou hast he that led us out and brought us into Israel. And the Lord said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel. Thou shalt be a captain over Israel. Is God saying this to you? You be a captain. You be a captain. You be a captain over Israel. Be a captain over Israel. Three. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to, he uh, to Hebron. And King David made a league with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king of Israel. He was already selected and anointed of God by Samuel. But these people wanted Saul because he had money and he had this. And Saul himself was like, I'm from a little tribe. I, I'm a little man. Well, he wasn't little in stature. I'm a nobody. Why do you want me over king? And when they got him, all he did all his days after David killed Goliath in that account we read was try to kill David. So now it's saying for David was 30 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 40 years. He's only 30 years when he become king. He was about 17 when he killed Goliath. He was a young rat ruddy lad. But now he's a grown full man, got several wives and children and stuff like that. So pretty much all of his adult life Saul tried to pursue him up until a chapter or two ago when Saul died. So it goes on. Chapter 5. And he reigned 40 years, okay? So in Hebron, chapter 5, he reigned over Judah 7 years and 6 months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and 3 years over all Israel and Judah. 6. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem Unto, Je unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come in hither. 7. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same in the city of David. 8. And David, see, there is a city of David. That's supposed to be Jerusalem, the city of God. Africa is the land of God, people. But that that star of David, that blue star of David, that six-pointed star, that's something the, the, the Ashkenazi Jews added on to this. Um, I, I, we, we could talk about that star of David another time, okay? Verse 8, And David said unto them, Whosoever get it up to the gutter, and smited the Jebusites, and the lame and the blind, that are hated of David's soul. He shall be chief and captain. Wherefore, they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into thy house. They don't want the blind and the lame. We got to pray for that, right? Uh, this is the word of God. So 9, so David dwelt in the land, uh, David dwelt in the fort and called it out, called it the city of David. This is where we get the city of David, right? We're coming up on 29 minutes here, guys. And we are on verse 9 and have to go to 25. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo and inward. 10. And David went on and grew great, and the Lord God... And the Lord God of hosts was with him. It's important for us to grow in the eyes of God. A lot of people did it. Moses did it. David did it. People grow with favor from God and favor from man. Okay? Let's not forget that. God will use people to favor you. For him. Now, if you find out you're being loved by all the world and everybody like you, I check that spirit in you. Because God says it's not meant for everybody to like us. If we follow Christ and the world and the people of the world hate Christ, come on people, they're going to hate you as well. They're going to hate me. They're going to hate anybody that bring forth this word of God. 11. 
And Haram, king of Tyre, sent messages to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons, and they built David a house. 12. And David perceived that the Lord had established him king over Israel. How do we perceive that? It's the spirit in you. God gave us the spirit of comfort, the spirit of truth. It will bear witness in you, and you will begin to perceive the things of God. And he had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people, Israel's sake. For whose sake? His people, Israel. 13, and we have 12 verses to go. And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem after he was come from Hebron. And there were yet sons and daughters born to David. This is King David at his best, y'all. Some of you men want to know where you get your whoring from and your whoremonger ways. You're not too far from your ancestors. The apple does not fall far from the tree. These men in the Bible had several women. I'm not here to push that on anybody, but they were able to take care of these women in these days. Men now today could barely take care of one woman in a family. So that's why Christ came along. It's a man, it's a woman, it's a relationship. He breaks that down in the New Testament. And we will get there eventually during this morning read. We got a couple months probably to go before we get there. But we will get there, right? Nonetheless. So it goes on to say, verse 14, And these be the names of those that were born unto him in Jerusalem. Shamua, Shamua. These are black names, people. These are, these are color folk names. These are names from the hood, from the ghettos, part of Israel. You know what I'm saying? These are hood names. And Shobab and Nathan and Solomon is finally on the scene, y'all. One of my favorite characters in the Bible. I love this man. Full of wisdom. He could have asked God anything for anything in the world. He just said, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. So we see Solomon on the scene. Oh, but he also has 15. Ibhar also. And Elishua. And Nepheg and Japhia, 16. And Elisha Ama, and Elisha Ada, and oh, sound like my sister. Lord have mercy. Elifa Elet. My sister has eight kids. She has five with D's and three with M's because there's two baby daddies there, two, one husband, one children's father, and one husband. The children's father all by the same man. D, 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 D. Her husband, M, 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 M. And this is David. All of them have the E words right here. Verse 17. But the Philistine heard that they had anointed King David over Israel. And all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to hold. Like, what's up? I love King David because he was not afraid. He told he told Goliath. He told Saul, oh, you think I can't beat Goliath? I killed the bear. I killed the sheep. This ain't nothing to me, this giant standing right here. And why he killed the bear, I meant a bear and a lion, is because one of the sheep, they got hold of the sheep, and he went and he got the sheep out their mouth and ended up killing the animal. So that convinced King Saul at the time that David could be the one to go fight Goliath. And I told you he tried to give David his uniform, but you can't fight your battle in somebody else's clothes. You have to put on the whole armor of God. You have to call upon the living God of the armies of the Lord. You, we always want somebody else to do it for us. You have to begin to assume responsibility for your own personal walk and faith in God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If you want to hear the word of God, how much of the word are you hearing? 35 minutes in, guys, and we are on verse 18. The Philistines also came and spread themselves into the valley of Raphaim. 19. 
And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. Ask God. You were trained. Don't talk to God. Don't ask questions. This is how it is. These people talk to God. God, is it okay to move here? Is it okay to take this job? Is it okay to date this man? Wait on the answer, though. He will answer you, but you're in such a rush. You go out there and you pick the wrong man, the wrong woman, the wrong job, the wrong house, the wrong city, the wrong car, all because you won't consult God. Consulting people, please. 20. And David came to by Al Parazim, and David smote them there, and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon my enemies before me, as the breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of the place Baal Al Parazim. Parazim, yeah. 21. And there they left their images, and David and his men buried them. 22. And the Philistines came up yet again and spread themselves in the valley of Raphim. And when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. See, mulberry trees was around back then. There's nothing new under the sun. They even ate raisins in this Bible, y'all. We read that yesterday. 24 and we got two verses to go and let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in on the tops of the mulberry trees that then thou shalt bestir thyself for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines who will go out before you the Lord the living God of the armies of Israel will go out before you and smite these people. You cannot take every battle into... Watch that seven-hour live I did last night. You cannot take every battle into your own hand. There's some demons I refuse to fight because some of them, but by fasting and prayer, is the only way you get rid of them. And even the apostles said, Christ, how come we can't get rid of these demons right here? What, what's wrong with us? Nothing wrong with you. Sometimes demons are a little bit more powerful than just prayer or reading the word of God. And Christ came back and said, this kind right here is but by fasting and prayer. You want to get rid of some demons? Start fasting and praying. And you can't always just say, well, pray, pray, pray. No, you got to get up. Faith without works is dead. And let me tell you something. You out there working... Work without faith is dead as well. That's what the church do. Work, 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 busybody. They're like the Marthas of the world. They don't have no time to sit and really worship the Most High God outside of church where it really matters. You understand what I'm saying, people here? We got to get this word, all right? You know I'm passionate about this. I don't have nothing else to do right now. But to grow in the Lord, grow with favor with man, and grow in statue. The Bible says Christ grew with favor and statue with men and before the Lord. Verse 25, and this ends the morning read. We write at 39 minutes, guys. I'm so excited. 25, and David did so as the Lord hath commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Gibeah unto thou come to Gazar. Guys, and this ends the morning read. Let me go ahead and put some music on for you so we can get into it. How was it? It kind of goes a little bit faster when I'm not looking at the chat, right? And, and saying good morning and reading comments and things like that. I mean, this these are easy reads here. We have some chapters that are much longer. But these are fairly short chapters, so... We can get through them with simplicity and understanding. You understand what I'm saying? So this read probably is going to go out to about 41, 42 minutes, guys. Episode 41. 
Yay! I'm excited, right? This will be a premiere if I didn't say that in the beginning. I will be down in the comments with you, showing you some love. And I apologize. I know I usually read better and sound better, but guys, I really been up. I really have been up 24 hours, give or take. I did not go to bed yet, so I wanted to get on and do the morning read. At least it's done. Try to upload, premiere it, and then I'll go lay down, take my shower, get ready for bed, sleep a couple of hours, get up, come back, go live again, guys. I've been hitting the pavement, looking for work. It's been like a black cloud over me. And I'm like, I usually get the best of jobs, get called back, right? You know, usually I walk in and get the job right on the spot. So there's some hindrance over me, guys, and I need your prayers. I need all your positive energy. And if you don't mind supporting this channel in any way you can, again, 1 Corinthians 9 and 18 says, I will abuse my power if I charge for the word. But there's nothing wrong with you giving love offerings. If any other ministry bless you, you support that ministry, right? That ministry ain't working. The church, some pastors don't work, but they living really good, right? How they living good? Of course, they can get 501c3s and all these other things, but it's your money. It's your support of the church. Is the church blessing you? Has the church set your soul free? Has it been truthful with you? This is Religion Week TV, and my spiritual ears stay... Thank you for joining me with this edition of episode 41 of the morning read. God bless you. Have a great day. And remember, let the word of God be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathways. Why, guys? Wherever you step, it will be bright. And wherever you go in this world, being led by the Holy Spirit, you will shine his light. So with that being said, guys, I'm able, I was able to get the morning read done. It's going to get up to you. I stumbled over a few words like I do if I went to sleep and got sleep the night before. The Bible reading some of those words can be hard, like King David was saying. A lot of things can be hard, but his grace is sufficient for us, people. His grace is sufficient for us. I don't know why, but I just feel like talking to you a little bit. Paul, in the book of Corinthians, had a messenger of Satan. Kind of like I feel with me right now. My channel won't grow. I can't find a job. I've been looking for a single family house to move me and my family into. Uh, my social media sites don't want to grow. It's like a, 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 a messenger of Satan buffeting me, the Bible says. And he went to the Lord. He said, Christ, this thing is in me, man. I've been shipwrecked. I've been in prison. I've been stoned damn near to death. I was Saul. Now I'm Paul. I got this thing in me that won't let up on me. Why is all this negativity and this this persecution come upon me remove it from me dear lord <laughs> i love the most high god christ was like hey, hey, nope he had some three times and three times he was denied kind of like peter did when he said do you know christ peter said hell no i don't know christ damn him to hell and i denied him three times read it he cursed, he swore, and he denied the Christ. We have not done such a great a thing. And Peter still went down in history as a great apostle. So Paul, take this from me, Christ. He says, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul says, I delight in my infirmities. He says, in my weakness, your strength is made perfect. Let's, let's get this, people. But there's some things I give to the Lord and there's other things he pushed back on me and said, you better do the job. You better make it right. You better, you know, come before me the correct way, which if you don't know how to pray, go, go right there to the Matthew 6. Let's get this. Meditate on this.
This is Religion Week TV, guys. And my spiritual ears stay. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.